it's another beautiful day. For working on networks, that is. We're at this facility here to work on another network. This one just needs us to lift it up off the floor. I'm Derek from TCI, and I'll be your host and narrator for this episode of... Our project this time is this network here. It's outgrown its little cubby hole, so we're going to expand it into a much bigger cabinet and get it off the floor. That way we can make better use of this space. This is a bit of an interesting network in that they don't have just the internet, but they also have a Metro Ethernet connection that I thought it might be fun to share with you. When you have Metro Ethernet as your service, your service provider can connect multiple facilities that you own into a single layer three or even layer two network. The way that they do this is the inbound fiber that comes to your main location will have traffic tagged with different VLANs. How you sort those VLANs out is usually up to you. You might create sub interfaces on your router, or you might have a switch like they have here, which sorts out the incoming VLANs into different access ports. As you watch us tear this network apart and rebuild it, you might see some equipment that you don't recognize or a layout that doesn't make a lot of sense. And just keep in mind, that's because of the Metro Ethernet VLAN tags that we need to keep intact. Let us begin the teardown process. The first part of any network rescue is to trace out the patch cords. I'm always looking through these with an eye for the weird ones where it's a phone line, something hanging, cross-plugged, something like that. What I usually do is label each of my panels if they don't have a label already so that I can identify them, and then I label every piece of equipment that they're plugged into. With that, I'll then just go through port one, tug on that wire, see what port it's plugged into into which piece of equipment, and then I'll document everything I've got. Eventually, I'll have a large list of all the ports and what they're plugged into. This helps me rebuild everything without having to commit it to memory. In combination with photographs and notes with the customer or end users, I can rebuild this network if I'm able to document where everything is plugged in. During the tracing procedure, we also take the opportunity to measure the depth of each of these devices and the offset of the ears. I need to know this because I wasn't able to survey the space in advance. So we've got this brand new rack that everything's going to go into. However, the rack isn't necessarily set up to properly accept the depth of these devices in a nice orderly fashion where we can close the door and run patch cables and everything fits well. So we take our measurements and then we proceed to adjust. Getting all of these adjustments performed before this rack is on the wall is extremely critical. You definitely don't want to be up there installing equipment and then get to the end and realize you can't close the door on the cabinet. Once I feel confident about my spreadsheet, I'll begin to remove each of the patch cords. As I do so, I call out what I'm removing from what and my colleague will check my work against the spreadsheet. This way, we have a little bit of oversight in case I made a mistake when I was tracing. Now, while I'm pulling out all of these patch cords, I'm obliged to show you that there are some plastic tabs that suck. It's these round ones. Over time, after they've been installed, they essentially turn to stone. It's all I can do with a metal piece to push these back down so that I can remove them from the patch panel and the switch. If you get the opportunity, try to use these more simple tabs like this patch cord here. They're much easier to maintain and remove as you're working in the future. Just food for thought. What I refer to as uplinks are the switch to switch connections. I also trace out what servers are plugged into which switch ports and NIC ports on the server itself. I also keep an eye out for anything weird. Having removed all the patch cords, it sometimes reveals strange things that are just sort of dangling. 
I make a note of all these things, printing out labels or writing on them with a Sharpie as I'm able. That way I can reproduce this setup after I've lifted everything off the ground. Making the uplink spreadsheet is a lot faster because there's only a few of them. With that out of the way, I can begin to tear apart the network devices from each other and remove them from the rack. Once again, as I unpatch things, I call out what's plugged into what so that my colleague can check it against the spreadsheet and make sure that I didn't make any mistakes. I take everything out of this rack and push it behind so that it just sets on the ground. Switches come out, routers come out, the fiber ONU comes out, the fiber interface device, the fiber uh, tray, that one I just stick in the back and let it hang for now. It's a little bit more complex to deal with, so I'm going to address it in just a moment. But for now, I'm trying to clear out this closet. After the closet is cleared out, I can take stock of the situation. I've got some free space to work in, and I've got my new cabinet that needs to go in there. We'll begin to measure and start installing things. The cabinet was pre-assembled, so we're going to push it into the closet and try to just sort of get a sizing going here. We want to place it in such a way that when the closet doors are swung open, that the cabinet door itself can also open, which means we have to be careful of how high on the wall we put it. Now, if you've built a few networks in your time, you might be having the same thought that I was having while I was struggling with this, which is, why aren't we using a floor standing two post relay rack? Wouldn't that make much more sense and give us so much more space to work with for the equipment. You're absolutely right. However, the end user that we're giving this to specifically requested a wall mounting locking cabinet. First, for compliance reasons, it has to be locked up. And secondly, they have a lot of plans for that area of the floor that's gonna be cleared. So you can't argue with the client. We're just gonna do exactly what they asked and get this sucker on the wall. I know everyone on the channel appreciates a good action shot, so if you look closely, you'll probably be able to see the exact moment I threw my back out. This thing is not that heavy. One person can lift it, but it's awkwardly sized and hard to get your hands around. Our earlier test where we sized the rack against this closet showed us that the four-foot ladder is within a few inches of exactly where we want to mount this rack. So we push the ladder in and we're going to set the rack on top of it to give us a little bit of support. If you find yourself doing this, make sure to bring friends. You're going to get tired and you're going to need someone to take over for you. So I've got some of the boys here with me and they're going to help us secure this to the wall. I'm just going to speed through the video, let you watch us struggle and have a good laugh. Okay, it's on the wall, and it's a lot easier with friends. Now, with that out of the way, you probably saw that the only thing holding this on the wall are the toggle bolts that we installed. You probably didn't see me hit any studs. There's only one stud in this entire wall, as near as we can tell. So we're going to secure a couple of washers in order to lock that sucker into the stud and give us a lot more support. 
The rack doesn't weigh anything in the beginning, it's very light. But once all the equipment is in it, it'll be pretty heavy, so we definitely need to be in a stud to give it some support. With the rack secured to the wall, we're going to want to get all of the cables inside it. Most of the Cat 6 we were able to push in from the top uh, before we mounted it on the wall, just because we didn't want to have to crawl up into that ceiling after the fact. But you did see me ignore the fiber tray from earlier. Now it's time to address it. We're going to have to open up this fiber tray and make sure that the ISP, when they installed this, zip tied it very securely and that nothing will break if we try to move this fiber. I have a fusion splicer on standby in case there's a mistake or we drop it or something breaks the strands. If I open this up and I don't like what I see, I'll just cut it and we'll attach a new pigtail at that time. But this one's pretty well done and it looks like it'll be able to be manhandled, no problem. So we'll get this up into the rack and then we can start the equipment reassembly. Reassembly should be easy now that we've got our spreadsheets handy and everything's on the wall. First the panels go in, then the switches, shelves, and then I put all of the Metro Ethernet equipment on the bottom. That's the fiber tray, the ONU, and the VLAN sorting switch. With the help of the spreadsheet, re-establishing the uplinks is short and sweet. The bulk of the rebuild work will be the patch cords. I consulted with the end user to see if it mattered what was plugged in where. They confirmed for me that each of the switches is VLAN all up and down. So I have to maintain exactly the same patch layout that I started with. I'm not able to optimize this based upon what reaches which port. Shame. But we'll make it work. Reconnecting all of this equipment in an aesthetically pleasing manner is a multi-step process. We do a little bit of work, step back, and see if we like what we're looking at. We bring in the end user and ask them, do they like what they're looking at? And we will tweak the results a little bit each time and make some progress. In the end, we'll eventually have something that we collaborated with the end user on and everybody's proud of the outcome. As we get closer and closer to wrapping things up, we have the end user test every single workstation, phone, fax line, and anything else. And we fix, with our fluke, any screw-ups. Yeah, that looks good. That's how you do it, guys. We confirmed with the end user that everything is working correctly. We fixed any screwy jacks or bad punches that got loose in the manhandling. And now there's nothing left but to end this day by cleaning up our mess and heading home. We'll be doing it again soon. We appreciate having you with us, and we'll see you in the next one. Hey everyone, this is Derek, your friendly narrator, and I just want to thank you for watching that video. And I wanted to say, if you have something you want us to show, uh, please drop me a comment, send me an email, or find me on LinkedIn. I learn a lot every time I do one of these videos, and I really appreciate the input from the crowd. It gives me a lot to think about. In fact, I've got some great ones coming up that are from suggestions from other uh, uh, comments that I saw. So don't be shy. Throw yours out there. I really appreciate it. And until I see you on the next one, happy network building, everyone.